Welcome. Today we look at some of the tips for the external examinations in IP environmental systems and societies. Follow the command terms. They tell you how to approach the question. For example, describe the shape of a pyramid of productivity. This would simply require you to say that it is always in the form of a pyramid with the bottom part of the pyramid being the largest and the second tier in the pyramid being 10% the size of the first trophic level or the producer level whereas an explanation would require you to give reasons for this loss of energy to learn more about the actual answer to this question, you can click here for a link to that video lesson. Definitions and correct terminology add polish to your answer. This can make a big difference. It's worth spending some time to learn them. Definitions like the ecological footprint, the amount of land and water, required to support a defined human population at a given standard of living. The measure takes into account the area required to provide all of the resources needed by the population and the assimilation of all of its wastes. Natural capital, a term used by economists for natural resources that if appropriately managed can produce a natural income of goods and services. The natural capital of a forest, for example, might provide a continuing natural income of timber, game, water, and recreation. Natural capital can be non-renewable, renewable, or replenishable. Another definition is sustainable development. Development to meet the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. The classic balancing act of having some development and having some environmental protection. Draw large, clear diagrams that are well labeled and annotated. For example, if you are describing negative feedback or a tendency to damp down, neutralize or counteract any deviation from an equilibrium, then it is useful to draw a proper negative feedback loop. This does not require elaborate drawings, but the key aspect of such a diagram would be to communicate clearly what is the initial state and how mechanisms change that initial state and damp it down. For more on this particular example, you can click here. Contradictions are something that you must avoid. One significant contradiction that students show in their writing involves ozone depletion and climate change or the enhanced greenhouse effect. If these confuse you, it is useful to return here to learn more about ozone depletion and here to learn more about the greenhouse effect. In general, it is very important in environmental systems and societies to think holistically and outside the box of a particular topic. Pay attention to the number of marks associated to a particular question or part. It is essential to be clear, diverse and discreet in your approach to an answer as opposed to a single vague repetitive discourse. Use bullet points when appropriate and treat each part of a question as a separate entity. Examples to support your answer are always a way to add sophistication. Stop now and consider this sample essay question. 
Read the question carefully. Consider the amount of marks associated with each part. Write down your answer, and then move on to have a look at this model answer. Pay careful attention to how the marks are allocated. Moving on to part B of the question. Here, the answer has already scored the eight marks for the question, but it goes on to add points beyond the mark scheme. Moving to the final part of the question, here you can see the answer beginning with a definition of the technical term. At this point, the six marks available for the question have already been scored. And again, there is an additional point beyond the mark scheme. Finally, owing to the clearly worded answers, with good use of technical terms, ESS vocabulary, and points beyond the mark scheme, an answer of this quality will also be awarded two additional marks for expression of ideas leading to a total of 20 out of 20.